Robert Runyon. Uh, we're in the southeast corner of Washington County. I was born and raised in Newport, Arkansas. Both sides of my family, my mom and dad, they were born and raised in Newport, Arkansas. My dad, he came to college and then basically ran off to California and worked in the shipyards for about six months and joined the Army. When he came back, he met my mom and they ended up having me and so he curtailed his education and started working. When he retired, he was uh, in charge of East Arkansas, Western Tennessee, and Northern Mississippi in the cotton industry for a federal compress. They collect all the cotton from the farmers, from the gins, and store it, and ship it, and grade it, and all that. And he had his own architectural business as a second job. And he'd work his main job all day, and then he'd sit up all night and draw house plans. When I got old enough to, and I had been taking art lessons anyway, and, and drawing, and had demonstrated an, an ability to draw, he got me uh, started on doing just basic layouts helping him. I got a lot of the inspiration for my ideas from uh, the movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, which I saw at the movie theater when I was seven or eight years old, I would assume. And it kind of has always, you know, stuck in the back of my head, you know. Uh, I kind of applied those ideas in, in my artwork when I was drawing in, in high school, in junior high school and in high school, you know, and I'd just sit around and get in trouble in class because I'd be filling my notebook up with doodles and drawings and not paying attention to what I was supposed to be paying attention to. I remember one of the first toys I got for Christmas was a big giant set of Lincoln Logs and I had that stuff all over the house. And I used to take playing cards, decks were always messed up because I was always building pyramids out of cards. See how tall I could build them. Rick McNair's log house, who was a good friend and a client of mine who commissioned me to build a structure for him probably about 20 years ago. Uh, this house is kind of like a living organism because uh, it moves all the time. You know, it gets dry, it shrinks, it gets humid, it swells. And so it is like a living uh, entity of its own accord. It had to be engineered to accommodate those features. Uh, to prevent, you know, doors hanging up and windows breaking and that type of stuff. It's a settling issue. This structure is is quite animated. Uh, it's everywhere you look, it's something a little different. And it's moving, visually moving. You know, the lines. Uh, there's nothing individually that's straight and square. It's just, it's all natural elements you know, natural raw materials that are brought together in a uh, cohesive manner. And uh, I, as I've said before, I've picked that up from watching the Walt Disney animations and particularly the backgrounds, which is very intriguing to me. I did a lot of the work, probably the bulk of the work in this house is done with hand tools. I did use a chainsaw to rough stuff out and, and, you know, to get rid of the bulk wood. But at, at, after that, it was strictly chisels, gouges. I used a lot of mechanical, rudimentary mechanical devices on the assembly process, block and tackles and inclined planes and mule power. Come here, June Bug. Come here, June Bug. Come here, June Bug. Well, I've approached everything in my building career I build for prosperity is what I call it. Now it may, something may happen, like lack of attention, you know, but even, even if nobody came back out here forever, a hundred years from now, this structure will still be here.
one day I had to fish a piece of steel out of a guy's eye. I took a needle and flipped it out of there. It was just a little old sliver. He didn't blink. 